Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Shilpa Medicare Earnings Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Ranjan Jain from EYIR. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you, Ranj. A warm welcome to all the participants to the Q1 FY25 earnings call of Shilpa Medicare Limited. The financial results and the presentation have been uploaded on the company's website and on the exchanges. Please note that this conference has been recorded and the transcript along with audio of the same will be made available on the website of the company as well as the exchange. I would like to remind you that today's discussion might include forward-looking statements based on the current expectations and assumptions. These statements are subject to risk and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially. Investors are cautioned not to place undue reliance on these forward-looking statements which speak only as of the date hereof. The company undertakes no obligation to publicly update or revise any forward-looking statements, whether as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise. Uh, now, to take you through to the results and to answer your questions today, we have the management team from the company, represented by Mr. Keshav Gutrada, Executive Director of Shilpa Pharma Life Sciences Limited, and Mr. Rabbesh Dalal, Chief Financial Officer. Now I request Mr. Keshav to provide you with a brief update in the, of the quarter. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Runjan. Very good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to discuss our Q1 FI25 results. I am Keshav Bhutada, and I will share you various business segments brief overview before handing over to Mr. Alpesh Dalal, our CFO, who will provide the financial highlights. Post that, we can open the floor for any questions that you may have. Overall, I will majorly give you major growth drivers in each segment and my briefing will be divided into four main verticals of Shilpa Group. API, Formulation, Transdermal Patch and ODF and Biologics. So let me start with the briefing of API business vertical in which in the oncology segment, the major updates are there were two NDA molecules which we were developing for our client from many years in which NDA molecule number one which we were developing for our US client. The client has received a breakthrough designation for the same product and for the same product NDA is planned to file by our client in Q4 FI25. We have already secured a pre-launch order in this quarter for which the supplies will be done over current quarter and the subsequent quarters. For the second molecule, NDA molecule 2, the, currently the client project is under phase 3 supplies, for which already for the phase 3 clinical study we have successfully received order. For the same, the delivery is already finished in the same quarter. And for this product, currently the client is doing phase 3 clinical studies. Apart from that, two new oncology molecules which is abriteron and methotrexate for which USGMF is planned to, USGMF and European CEP is planned to file in Q3 FI25. And two new molecules planned scale up and validations in the oncology segments are already initiated and expected to complete in Q3 FI25. And for all four products, we are also developing our own formulation so that we are not dependent on only external sales also, we will have our internal captive formulation consumption. The major focus in the oncology is with the existing portfolio, build a differentiated long-term complex pipeline, which can give us sustainable growth in years to come. Now I move forward to non-oncology business in which the most important update for the company in this quarter was ursodeoxycholic acid, which is a very complex and niche API, which we have in our grid for which the European CEP was received in this quarter. With the approval of CEP, it opens a big opportunity for Shilpa Medicare in export markets. And in the quarters to come, we are 
confident that this molecule is expected to grow in export market in a large volume apart from that nor udca which is again a nda molecule which for which philpa is already developing the formulation for the same molecule already the dmf is completed and the initial launch quantity orders manufacturing has already started in the non oncology segments we have always kept our focus on import substitute molecules and complex molecules so we have successfully completed for two new non oncology molecules lab validation for the same product the plant scale up is currently initiated and we are planning to finish the plant validation and subsequently dmf filing for two new molecules which are complex and import substitutes which can give us a sustainable revenue in years to come now i move forward to uh, new verticals in which cdmo peptide and polymers which is a, again very important focus for company in the cdmo space the major updates are for the us client for which already the preclinical supplies were successfully done now the program has advanced to phase 1 slash phase 2 clinical studies for which we have successfully received order and for which the supplies are expected to complete in q2 slash q3 fi 25 for the second client which is from taiwan the program has moved to the phase 3 study and currently client has given us order for finishing the plant scale up and validation batches and making drug master file ready which again gives us assurance that we will be one of a major suppliers for the same client for this product also we are expecting to complete the plant validation in this financial year apart from that two to three new cdmo projects were signed in this quarter for which initial large scale development is already commenced now moving forward to polymers in which our major focus has always been on developing specialty complex polymers in q1 we are happy to share with you that we could crack one more us mnc client for which the initial sample order was successfully completed in q1 and for which the order is already received for the pilot quantity for which the supplies are expected to complete in q2 slash q3 apart from that there are many other specialty polymer projects which are currently in the development phase now moving forward to peptides in which the our major focus has been a mix of uh, glp1 portfolio and some complex products i am happy to share our first glp1 product which is liraglutide for which the plant validation was successfully completed which is a very complex api and the dmf for the same is expected to file in q3 and the second update in peptides is for one of the european client which is the nc molecule for a new indication we have successfully finished initial development phase of the contract and the initial supplies were finished in q1 now going forward we are expecting the supply for phase 1 for which companies geared up apart from that semaglutide which is again a second molecule in the peptide space the lab scale development is finished and now our target is to finish the plant validation and drug make drug master file ready in this financial year the and the last important update is on the regulatory in the q1 we could finish the envisa brazil gmp audit for almost 29 products in unit 2 and the audit was successfully completed i am sure in years to come this will give us a good opportunity in brazil market also to sell our api now i move forward to the formulation business in which the major updates are our first nda molecule for which we had received approval primitexet for which the j code was already granted j code is for premium pricing now our partner has already applied for the same product for k code which will help them in insurance reimbursement for which they are expecting to get approval in this quarter so going forward for primitexet in us we are confident that in quarters to come we are likely to gain good market share apart from that the second most important nda molecule for which already company had filed in last financial year we are likely to get approval for the same product in q2 slash q3 of fi 25 now the third update is on the 
there is a one more NDA molecule which is the oncology oral liquid for which our partner had already filed this product in US which is in the oncology space especially in the oral liquid it is a first of its kind US NDA which is filed and for which the approval is expected in Q4. With this we are confident that for the US market the pipeline is very well built up in, uh, and the same will give us growth in years to come. Apart from that, in Europe market, now I move forward to our upcoming big launch, which is for Nilotini, where company, I am happy to share that our regulatory review for the same product is already completed. And the launch for the same product is expected in Q3. And for this product already, company has partnered with the number one company in the generic space in oncology selling in Europe. So we are confident that this product also will give us a good sales in the Europe market. The second update in Europe market is on the transdermal patch portfolio where our first product will be filed in September of this financial year for which the complex clinical studies are already completed and is successfully passing. And the product is expected to be filed in Europe in Q2, FY25. Two new transdermal patch products deals were signed, signed in this quarter again with our various partners for which the development is already started which will give us a confidence that on the transdermal patch portfolio we have a sequential pipeline and a partner ready to sell our product. Apart from that on when I uh, speak specific on the pipeline we have two NDA molecules which is SML NUD07 which we have currently company has developed for NAFLD indication for India and emerging markets. Currently the phase 3 studies are expected to complete in Q2 FY25 and we are expecting to file this product in Q3 FY25 in India and we will start partnering in various emerging markets. The second product SML TOP09 which is for androgenic alopecia. For the same product already the phase 2 studies were completed and for the phase 3 studies already we have applied in DCGI and we are expecting to start the phase 3 study in Q3 FY25. Overall our focus in formulation has always been to build a differentiated and complex portfolio which will give a sustainable growth for us. And company is very focused on cost, stress, uh, cost spending. And we are only investing on programs where we have a partner and where we are confident of selling those products. Now on the regulatory update which is on the USFD audit of our formulation facility. So we have already finished meeting with the USFD and they have suggested us to appoint some subject experts for which already the appointment is completed and the review has started. And we are expecting to complete the review in Q3 FI25 after subsequently post which we will be again applying to US FDA for further course of action. Now I move forward to biologic business which has always been our interest and where we have seen a good traction in the last two quarters and the same you will observe in the current quarter also. So. In the biologics, our first product Adalimumab was approved in Morocco market which was our first biologics approved in the export market. And the same product is already filed in many of the emerging markets currently already we have filed and uh, we have started discussing on partnering also for the same products with other clients. Now the second product, the major update is on the Afliber set where currently our client scale up batches are uh, ongoing and we are expecting to start the phase 3 human studies for the same product in Q3 FY25. The second major update on Aflibercept is we have already finished the European scientific advice for the same product where we ask to the EMA agency our study, our development data we submit them, our RLD data we submit and we ask them permission to start the phase 3 study. So, the initial advice has been positive and now going forward we will be submitting the permission for phase 3 studies and then for Europe also we are discussing starting to discuss with various partners on the Europe market. Now on the CDMO space in the biologics 
the Korean client for which already the pro complex project was well executed at our end. The various orders for the preclinical and phase one supplies have already started. And for the same, there was a GMP audit also for with the same client, which was very important for us to pass successfully. So company could successfully finish the audit. And now we, we are confirmed as a primary supplier currently for the client for the phase one and phase two supplies. And apart from that, we have two new CDMO projects which are likely to be signed in second quarter FI25. And we are seeing very good traction in the biologics business where there is a lot of opportunity in the development space, in the manufacturing space. And we are confident that in a quarters to come, biologics will be a very strong portfolio for Shilpa Group. Now, the last and most important update is on albumin, where I'm happy to share that phase one study, phase one human study for the same product is already completed. And now we are rushing towards starting for uh, um, getting the permission for phase three study. And we are expecting to start the phase three human study in Q4 FI25. And the study duration is for one year. And the phase one study, what we have completed was against the European reference product. So the same phase one data will also be submitted to European regulatory authorities for asking them the phase three permission. Apart from that, the USDMA filing for albumin for the XCPN grade was successfully filed, which, give, which gives us more confidence on the quality of our product with not only uh, manufacturing, but also with the dossier quality. Apart from that, the new facility for large scale microbial fermentation, the project is going well on track and we are expecting to complete the project in Q3 FI25. At last, the major, last but not the least, we are delighted to announce a key CDMO signed during the quarter with Unicycid Therapeutics for oxylanthanum carbonate. We will be supplying to them finished formulation along with our own API. We will be receiving US dollar 10 million milestones for this deal as informed earlier. We will build a dedicated facility for them which will be funded by the customer. And initial launch quantity orders are already received from the client for which the manufacturing uh, with the current facility we will be starting in the quarters to come. Considering all the developments and expected growth in biologics, we have been building our teams further. In conclusion, we are confident in our ability to continue delivering strong performance driven by our robust R&D pipeline, operational excellence, and strategic focus on licensing and CDMO. And company's major focus has been on monetizing the existing assets and will continue to do same. We are committed to creating long-term value for our shareholders through consistent execution and innovation. I will now hand over to Mr. Alpesh Dalal, who will provide a detailed financial overview. Thank you very much, Kesha. Uh, good morning, everyone. Let me brief you, uh, briefly take you through the financial performance uh, for the first quarter uh, of the current financial year. Uh, our top line stood at 302 crore, uh, registering a growth of 15% year on year. And this was driven mainly by our formulation business, which witnessed a healthy growth of uh, growth in the emerging markets, as well as in the licensing segment that we are uh, operating in. The gross profit for Q1 uh, was uh, at 200 crore, with a uh, margin of 68%, as compared to 66% uh, in the comparable quarter last year. Uh, the EBITDA for the quarter was at 83 crores compared to uh, 50 crores in Q1. Again, a strong growth of 66% year on year. And EBITDA margins were also up at 28% uh, from 19% uh, during the same quarter last year. Uh, I'm also pleased to inform that, uh, you know, this is the seventh consecutive quarter wherein we are uh, able to improve our EBITDA and EBITDA margins. And uh, as we continue to optimize our cost and enhance our operational efficiency, and rationalize our R&D investment, uh, we expect to uh, continue this uh, momentum, right? Uh, also, you know, our uh, PAT for the quarter uh, stood at 14%, registering a margin of 5%. Now, uh, just a quick uh, update on the segmental performance. Our uh, API business topped the revenue of 173 crores, up 4% uh, compared to same quarter last year. 
uh, and uh, typically, you know, for our uh, API business, Q1 uh, ends up becoming a seasonally soft quarter, uh, which is generally visible uh, during, uh, you know, historically as well. Uh, but however, we expect that uh, robust growth uh, uh, should come in uh, going forward in this business as well. And formulation business uh, uh, for the quarter was at uh, 104 crores, registering a growth of 13% year on year. And biosimilar revenues were at 16%, uh, 16 crores, uh, which obviously is a, a new business that we have entered into, so has a healthy 81% growth rate over there. Now let me take you through uh, our balance sheet details. Uh, our net debt uh, for the, uh, as on 30, uh, 30th June 2024, stood at 514 crores as compared to 912 crore at the end of March 24th. And our capex for the first quarter was 58 crore, which was again mainly driven by our uh, investment in our aluminum facility uh, that we are setting up. Uh, with this uh, brief introduction, I would like to now open the Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahil Dasani from MAPL. Please go ahead, sir. Is Rahil there or we can move on to the next uh, question? Mr. Rahil? Mr. Rahil, your line is unmuted. Mr. Rahil, are you there? Um, sir, do you want to? Can no? Yes, I'll move on to uh, the next question. Is from the line of Jigar Valaya from OHM. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, the fantastic detailed presentation and the elaborate update update also. Uh, one question, if you can uh, help with regards to phase two for albumin. I mean, there is uh, phase one and then all the updates are for phase three, so. Yeah, uh, to give you a clear picture. See, currently in albumin, we have finished a phase one study in which we have finished the evaluation of safety, immunogenicity, as well as efficacy, okay? Usually phase two is needed for uh, compounds where if the safety studies are not established in phase one, then there is a need of phase two study. So currently we have done a phase one slash phase, uh, phase two study, you can just tell that, where we have also evaluated the safety of the product. Got it. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. The next question is from the line of Harsh from Bandhan AMC. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi, good morning. I'm out. No, there is... Harsh, your voice is not very clear. Yeah, I'm out. Sorry to interrupt. Harsh, just keep uh, the uh, mobile phone or the handset a little bit uh, far away from you. Yeah, is it better? Yeah. Sure. Sir, so, uh, Two questions, one on albumin again. Uh, the phase one human trials are done and the excipient rate DMS is fine. Uh, once you are done with the phase three trials, let's say at the end of fourth quarter of FY26, uh, should we assume that these are global trials or these will be selective market launch? Let's say Europe and emerging markets. How should one think about the human uh, uh, launch in the end of FI26 or early FI27, as well as the excipient grain launch. Yeah, see, I'll first update you on the uh, clinical study. See, the way, what strategy we have planned currently is there will be two studies which will be running in parallel. 
the one study will be for india and emerging markets and there will be a separate study which will be running for europe market okay so the studies will run in parallel in europe the procedure is once your phase one study is complete you have to submit to ema and take their advice after that only you are allowed to start the phase three studies so and for europe it will be a more elaborated studies instead of 12 months it will be maybe for 15 months so the strategy what we have built is we will be doing two studies in parallel one for india and emerging markets and second one will be for europe market is it clear and on the second question on the excipient grade see for the excipient grade already the drug master file is filed so now various people will start using our albumin as excipient in their formulation and then further they will be triggering it in their formulation and then we will be having the commercial high value sale for that application but apart from that there are many other applications which are non gmp application cell culture grade and multiple grades in albumin so currently our focus is to build a team which will promote this albumin for excipient grade so for this the right picture i will be able to give you more clarity on quarters to come how much sales we can do it and our focus is on getting good clients which can give a sustainable growth in excipient grade also so for the phase 1 that you have completed right now successfully this data will then be submitted to ema for their advice which will help us to go into phase 3 for european yes. studies correct correct so even in phase 1 study before starting the study we already had done a phase ema scientific advice and we taken a alignment with ema for our phase 1 study protocol after that only we had started the phase 1 study so the study what we have completed is very well applicable for ema submission also for asking them for phase 3 permission okay so your phase 1 which you have reported is very much in collaboration and the metrics which are required by the uh uh european authorities when if everything is successful then you will straight away move to the phase 3 part for both india emerging as well as european exactly you are right okay and just on this earlier comment of the two india molecules one the breakthrough de- breakthrough designation part where you have secured the pre launch orders and the second molecule where the molecules and the phase 3 studies could you help us give a little bit more color let's say on the breakthrough designation candidate of what could be the overall uh, uh, commercialization timeline since it is a breakthrough designation i'm assuming that it will be a, a, a decent size market but it may not be let's say a billion dollar plus market to that extent so uh, anything for us to understand particularly for the breakthrough designation product molecule yeah so sure. see currently for both the molecules uh, for the first molecule which is in breakthrough designation right our partner studies have been successful and they are planning to file a nda by end of this year currently that is what they have given us a plan and post which they will be having a approval if everything goes well in the next financial year so i will be able to give you a right picture more on this in the quarters to come because as and when the program advances right that is when the uh, usually there are more chances of having a long term arrangement which you would have seen in case of unicyclic therapeutics right so there will be more advancements which will be happening in this both the molecules in the quarters to come so currently i will not uh, be able to tell you a clear picture how big it will be how many billions but i can tell you having a breakthrough designation with such a niche opportunity it is surely a good opportunity for shilpa as a group and the timeline for the second molecule will obviously uh, succeed the timelines for the first molecule which is in the breakthrough designation yeah the second molecule it will all depend on the phase 3 study outcome for our partner for which we are surely expecting some uh, uh, results for that in the next financial year so we will be able to give you more updates on that and so uh, one last before i join the queue on liraglutide uh, you mentioned some comments maybe i missed that but you mentioned that the plant validation is complete 
and for semaglutide you mentioned the large scale development is finished if you could give us some little bit more color on the uh, 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 general timeline what could come next for both these products and when does the conversation with the client happen like in which year which financial year would that supply start assuming everything else falls in place See, with respect to first molecule liraglutide as already we have now finished the plant validation so now we will be promoting this molecule to various customers and we will have some customers seeded also in this financial year so for that molecule i feel that in the quarters to come there are chances that we'll have initial sales happening and also we have developed our own formulation also for this product which we are planning to already the formulation development is completed and we are planning to scale up our formulation in q3 fi25 and further it will be filed in various rest of the world markets so surely for this liraglutide we will see in quarters to come a lot of traction in api as well as formulations and on the second molecule semaglutide currently the lab scale development is completed and once we finish the plant validation with drug master file that is when the commercial picture will start coming in so maybe for that you can assume in next financial year we'll have more picture on the commercial sales so let's see if liraglutide is more near to medium term without getting into semaglutide liraglutide opportunity for you in the initial let's say next 2 3 years will be more of an emerging market and india market opportunity rather than the us europe market opportunity would that be the right way to look at because this is a fairly complex product so there are very few players who have been able to develop their own api there are many formulation players but api players are very far and few in between would that be the right picture no that is wrong because the api is developed for global market and our facility is already us fda approved eu approved japan approved brazil approved so we have global accreditation right so i think many people will use our api also in their formulations launch for us and europe market also in quarters to come if we are promoting it properly and in terms of the competitive environment of liraglutide sorry the competitive environment of liraglutide is that that the api players are far and few because the api complexity is uh, 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 very complex to that extent and again formulation players will be uh, very high because they can buy the api from a single supplier or a dual supplier exactly as you are right all right john that okay thank you yeah thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rahil dasani from mapl please go ahead sir yeah hi am i audible now yes hello oh okay uh, so first of all thank you for the opportunity in the last call we said we would update on the pemetrex injection post one quarter of commercialization so post launch what has been our sales to amnil and uh, what off they have they seen for this product if you can provide some numbers yeah post launch currently amnil has already sold more than 1000 vials currently in us market and uh, they are waiting for k code also which is again very important for insurance reimbursement okay which is expected to come in this quarter so post which i feel there will be more sales happening in the quarters to come got it and for albumen another player by the name of albio medics which was acquired by sartorius is also into the combinant albiomen uh, and has been selling the product commercially for a long time and that to in all the grades while we use pichia pasture is they use the saccharomyces so what is the difference in terms of yield and efficiency see i cannot comment on their yield and their process because that is confidential and not known to me but what i can tell you is our process is highly competitive and albumidex is selling or sartorius is currently selling this product only as xcp and grade okay and they have been uh, getting themselves qualified for many years so that is why currently they have had good market share in the xcp and grade itself so what we are doing is we will be offering a combo which will be excipient grade as well as therapeutic use so for us the market will be much wider than albumidex okay and are we planning to undersell them or go for a premium 
I think that is too early for me to comment currently. I because uh, as you know, Shilpa is more a B two B partner, right? So once we are entering into some arrangements in uh, upcoming quarters or years to come, I think we'll be able to give you a much clearer picture. Got it. And for the XCP and grade, now that we have got the DMF, what sort of interest have we seen for our product? How many potential customers are conducting stability tests with our grade? Something around that. Yeah, I think currently it is uh, at a very early stage, so I would prefer to uh, answer this question maybe in upcoming quarters if it is okay. Okay, and yeah. for the licensing part of the business, uh, this quarter's licensing revenue growth was it led by increased partnering contracts and thus the initial fees, or more of the older contracts doing better milestones? Yeah, it's a mix of both. Uh, see, as you know, I have been informed in the previous quarterly calls also. We are a pure B two B company, and our focus has always been on developing complex portfolio. So, for we are, if you see every quarter, we have signed existing deals, we have upcoming milestones also, and we have also had a new contract signed. So, from last four quarters, we have successfully signed in every quarter deals with new clients. Which shows that our existing contracts are also giving us the revenue and as well as new contracts. So currently in this quarter, it's a mix of both. It's a ratio of maybe around fifty-fifty. That's interesting. Got it. And just to quickly understand a few products in the pipeline, Doctor Claude's seems to be a very innovative product, and according to our last quarter's presentation, we launched it in India. So what is the update for this product? See, currently in Doctor Claude, we are uh, because it is a product which is currently under prescription. We are trying to get a approval under OTC. Then the market will expand drastically, which is a thing which is a very time-consuming process, which already we are trying. So currently, I feel our focus is on getting that OTC. After that, only we can have a good commercial market share. So. Currently, I feel with the mix of so much of portfolio and all, Doctor Claude. Until we get a OTC permission, we will not have a big commercial business. Okay, and any timelines around that when we accept the approval? No, I think so. It is purely government driven, and they have committee approval procedures, which we are also doing for the first time. So I think I will be able. I'll surely give you a right picture whenever we have some update on that. Okay, and according to this quarter's investor presentation, I saw a new product by the name of SML ODF zero one zero. We haven't talked of this before, so what is this exactly, and what is the early launch advantage? Yeah, that is a product which we have developed in our ODF division, where um, it is one very unique opportunity, majorly in US market, where uh, against. The current formulation, which is of tablets and capsule, we have developed the ODF product. Okay, and uh, it is confidential. So what I can tell you currently is, it is a good opportunity where our uh, human clinical studies we have successfully completed. Okay, and we are planning to file this product in US sometime in Q3 slash Q4 FI25. Got it. So I guess we cannot provide the. Uh, The commercial expectations. Okay. Uh, yeah, the next question is. But I'll surely give you a picture. Yeah. Got it. And for polymers, the supplies to two big customers were to start this year. Do we still stand on that? Yeah. In polymer, majorly, uh, as you know, we have uh, in the previous quarters we have already brief. We are working with one U.S. customer where we have supplied them initial pilot quantities, and now we are expecting the. Big launch orders in the upcoming quarters. Okay, so that is the update with one first US client, and in the Q1 FI25, we could successfully secure one uh, good order from a US MNC client, which was the initial pilot order. But this is a complex polymer, and if we are successfully delivering them, then this will be again a good long-term opportunity for us. So we will be able to give you more picture on the upcoming quarters once the successful delivery is done. Okay. And according to the previous phone call, we were sorry to interrupt, uh, Rahil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a continuation to that question. So we were previously guiding for 15 to 100 crores of target. So how much of that do we see from these two customers that we have talked about? 
no see what we have mentioned is in a mix of cdmo peptide polymer together it will give us a decent top line and bottom line that is what we have given an indication so i will not be able to disclose on client specific what will be the order value and how much it will be but i can tell you as a mix of these three combo segments there is a good potential for us not only from top line but also a very good bottom line got it i guess but you are confusing it because in the previous con calls we have said to get a 100 crores of target in the next 2 to 3 years from polymer segment alone yeah yeah from in 2 to 3 years yes that is what we have kept it as a target and we are on it for sure so that's what i'm just trying to understand is are these two customers enough for that or will we need more customers to achieve that target uh, raul i think uh, you know uh, as uh, keshav had mentioned earlier uh these are uh, early days to comment on uh, some of these aspects so you know uh, you will have to uh, we are talking about a 2 to 3 years time right we'll need to wait and uh, you know uh, wait, uh, watch how it uh, develops yeah. sure sure that's helpful i'll get back in a few thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen just a reminder please limit your questions to two questions only as there should be a fair chance for everybody to ask a question just limit your questions to two questions the next question is from the line of tushar from mk ventures please go ahead sir yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity so uh, first uh, quick understanding on albumin uh, uh, in the albumin tri clinical trial uh, there is no efficacy data point right for us so phase 3 is, is essentially just an extension of phase 1 trial with more participants right or are there any specific efficacy data points also that we are going to observe no in phase 1 is more like a pilot study where we have also evaluated efficacy so phase 3 will be more extrapolation on more number of subjects and phase 3 is more done on a uh, patient based study with specific indication so that is the difference okay. and uh, in terms of uh, the excipient grade uh, now that we filed the dms uh, what is the process in terms of you know when we approach clients can they already include the product in in their uh, you know uh, uh, in their dossiers or will do, do we need to wait for the uh, excipient grade approval before uh, they can start to include it in their plans how does this work so initially what clients do is because we have drug master file ready right so it's more like a api selling where they will start taking the initial quantities and develop their formulation and then they also register our product with their product with our api like albumi api and uh, for the therapeutic grade uh, can you highlight if we are already uh, in in any kind of conversations with any of the uh, global players because now that we have a visibility uh, near term are there any kind of conversations we are already uh, engaging in or uh, expect to engage uh, shortly for business development i think it's too early for me to comment to sir so i will maybe update in the future quarters sure second uh, this quarter uh, the other income uh, is uh, is on the higher side uh, in the past management has highlighted that uh, you know some of this other income is essentially operating income for us that but we do it through other income maybe if you can just uh, clarify again uh, how much of this 9 cr or 10 cr other income uh, is actually operating income or business related income and how much of it is maybe interest income or otherwise so uh, uh, tishar half of this income is uh, interest related income which is you know purely based on uh, some fd that we had created out of the qit proceeds uh and the other half is uh, more in the nature of uh, you know other kind of incomes including some write backs that you may have in the business and all because ideally you know when uh, the expense hits you it is uh, part of operating expenses but when if there is some write back that happens that goes into some other income okay sure and the licensing income that we have booked uh, for this quarter uh, does it include a component from unisys already yeah there is a very initial milestone of unisys currently uh, and are we uh, sorry mr tushar yeah i'm just doing a clarification on this and then then come back please so, uh, hello yeah uh, please give others a fair chance to ask a question if you wish yeah, to go, ask... go ahead go ahead tushar finish your question thanks uh, so uh, this licensing income that that we have booked right so 
we did about 150 crores licensing income last year and uh, is it fair to expect that uh, you know as some of our pro programs start to come towards uh, commercialization or late stage uh, that we should be able to maintain or uh, better the overall licensing component independent of whatever else we do on formulations do we think the licensing income is sustainable and can further be you know strengthen this part of the business yes yes tushar it is very sustainable and you will observe that in quarters to come great thank you so much and join with us yeah thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen please make sure that you limit your questions to two questions only as there should be a fair chance for other other participants to answer to get back in the call queue question and answer queue the next question is on the line of diresh from white oak please go ahead sir yeah thank you for the opportunity uh, alpesh this uh, in the presentation in the revenue break up we have given api and formulation so api is about 173 formulation is you know another 104 and then there is excluding other income the total revenues are 293 so what we add up it there is still a gap of about 17 crores so what explains Uh, you know, between 293 and what we add up, 104 and 172, 276. So that extra balancing 17 is what revenue. So, Dhiru, uh, if you see, there is also biological fees that we have mentioned here, which is about 15 and half crores. You, if you refer to slide number four. Okay, maybe I missed it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Slide number. So that is okay. That so you basically three broad basically segments. Basically, three segments are five. Ha. acha oh okay so when we are now when we start having let's say albumin revenues and biologics revenue we are going to uh, report like that okay understood and this uh, unicyclicive when we are going to supply both api and formulation right in api there is a cdmo segment so we will show that in cdmo api in the revenue classification that you have and when we supply formulation we will show it in the geography breakup how are you going to uh, bifurcate or you just put everything in cdmo which is an api no so uh, well, first and foremost that dinesh uh, here the api will be supplied by you know uh, our api unit to our formulation unit and formulation unit will be supplying the final product to uh, unicyce right now uh, obviously uh, currently we have the licensing fee coming into it uh, but as we go along uh, you know the way it shapes up the sales from api to formulation as in stand alone api business would uh, feature as a cdmo revenue and likewise uh, it will come up uh, you know in the geography in our uh, formulation business that will show up in the us revenue in the formulation right right okay understood and one last question how much is the capex requirement this year next year and how much we have mentioned we have been mentioned that for the year Uh, we have about uh, you know 125 crore uh, kind of uh, capex requirements uh, in total uh, about 50 crores for our uh, albumin project about uh, 50 or crores for our uh, uh, you know maintenance capex and all and around 25 or crores for our transgenic acid expansion that's a full year number okay and how much uh, r and d capitalized so uh, well, in the q1 we have done about uh, uh, cash from a cash flow perspective we have done 58 crores because that also includes certain advances that we were paid and all 58 total how much uh, expense and how much uh, through the balance sheet no, no there is no expense in this no these are all uh, balance sheet right? only thing is some of them have are part of uh, capex this uh, thing and that some of them are sitting there is as advances for capex okay ठीक है ऑल राइट थैंक यू ओके थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ रणवीर सिंह फ्रॉम नुआमा वेल्थ प्लीज गो हेड सर थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर टेकिंग द क्वेश्चन सर माय क्वेश्चन और रिलेटेड टू द यूडीसीए सो जस्ट वांटेड टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ बिग दिस यूडीसीए अपॉर्चुनिटी वुड बी एंड व्हाट आई अंडरस्टैंड देयर रॉ मटेरियल हैज बीन वेरी स्कार्स सो um uh, what is uh, i wanted to understand the whole uh, you know uh, business of the udca because their um, 
in fact the sourcing of raw material and plus earlier we used to have a joint venture where um, uh, this this was a key product so after this launching this is there any conflict with the uh, astral joint venture for this product no i think see udc as a opportunity we are very bullish on the opportunity only because the market and the applications for this product is very big okay and there is a worldwide uh, very big consumption and the major players in this product has been over years mainly europe and china so in the export market we are uh, hoping very positive having a cep grade api with complete drug master file support we will be growing in this product very well and answering your second question on the joint venture joint venture what we had is already concluded in uh, i think in year 20 maybe 2 3 years back so there is no implication for that no so i wanted to know that i think the astral joint venture is still into this business so is there any no. market competing we are competing no, not in or? the joint venture so that is not there currently it's already completely ended the european supply with our jv client yeah and and making a question around you know see we have developed our own independent process uh, you know independent of uh, the process which was there in the uh, joint venture so there is no uh, conflict with them on that front at all okay fine fine that clarifies and uh, secondly uh, in in uh, cdmo business uh, i think that two molecule what we are talking about currently where the pre launched orders uh, we have received so just uh, how big this could be I, i think it would be difficult right now but still if you could give some uh, number to understand that uh, whether that is going to be very significant for uh, overall financial perspective no i think see what i can brief you is what we are mainly focusing in our api business is to build more complex and long gestating business so that once we are securing and once we are entering with the clients in their phase 3 supplies then it's a long term business for us okay so in the years to come maybe with the announcement of unicycid therapeutics which already you would have read which is first cdmo supplies where we have made a long term agreement with the client so i can tell you we are planning to do similar such arrangements in the quarters to come so that which will give us more assurance on the long term business okay thank you and last one on taxation front uh, what exactly uh, what tax rate we are expecting for a whole year for a 425 Yeah. See, basically, uh, you know, typically our uh, tax rates are, uh, you know, in the region of about 35 odd percent. Uh, for the quarter, it has been uh, on a, a bit higher side, the, uh, mainly on account of intercompany interest, uh, which has been there, where the income is getting accrued in a higher tax company uh, as compared to, you know, the expenditure getting booked in a lower tax company. uh some of that we are uh, correcting right now where certain loans have been already converted into uh, equity which you would have read, uh, read in one of our notes as well and in certain cases what also happens is that uh, uh, because some loans are given for pre capitalization stage uh, the interest over there does not uh, get hit to pnl so there you know the income is getting charged to pnl but there is no uh, expense related uh, benefit coming into uh for that uh, interest spend so these uh, have resulted into higher uh, you know tax uh, rate for the current quarter but generally we should be able to maintain it in the region of about 35% okay thank you thank you that's it for my side thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of yash mehta from art ventures please go ahead sir uh no order Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I I wanted to ask, uh, can you throw some light on the uh, on the beta margins this time? Uh, they have expanded by. Uh, sorry, can you be more louder? Now we are not able to hear you. Sorry. Okay. Can you can you throw some light on the beta margins? They have expanded considerably this time. And can you th- uh, can you guide on what kind of beta margins do you aim to maintain in this financial year? yeah see the main reason for the ebitda margin improvement is you know the mix that we have had 
some of these licensing income also helps in that because uh, you know uh, compared to that licensing income uh, you know the related costs are uh, lower also uh, you know when uh, we see uh, decent growth has happened in the formulation business which is a better margin business as compared to api so uh, you know some of these business mix uh, related aspects have contributed to improved uh, margin uh, and we obviously as we have been uh, mentioning it since past uh, few quarters that we are uh, very actively uh, uh, looking at you know more efficiency in our operations and also uh, keeping our costs under check so uh, this is a combination of all these efforts uh, which we are seeing in the improvement in the ebitda and uh, we expect that you know the ebitda uh, should remain in similar kind of range okay all right uh, and any uh, any guidance on the revenue for fy25 uh, i don't think we would be in a position to provide any guidance per se uh, that's something that as a policy we do not do okay all right thank you thanks thank you the next question is from the line of aprisha from molecule ventures pms please go ahead sir uh, hello yeah am i audible yeah uh, so my first question is uh, on the formulation side so if we look at the breakup the us formulation segment has uh, come down from 30 crore to 10 crore uh, if we compare it on a quarterly basis so could you please explain the reason behind this because as far as the data goes the uh, contribution from p matrix injection was supposed to come from this quarter or uh, so what what caused this kind of performance in that segment and then how much of that was contributed by p matrix yeah see uh, there are two aspects here in primitex said for us business okay we are having a arrangement with our partner where we supply them at a floor price and then we have a profit share okay so whatever sales revenue you will see on the last quarter in the us which was on the for one time supply for the us market which we had done at a floor price okay and for which the, we will be expecting in quarters to come a profit share also which you will see as part of licensing income so you will be able to see that uh, sorry it will be in the us sales income which you will see in the upcoming quarters to come so since as i already mentioned in premed exit case there are two codes j code and k code so j code for the premium pricing already is secured so once k code which is a reimbursement code which approval which we are expecting in this quarter once we receive that then you will see a jump in the sales in the upcoming quarters so for uh, let's say last quarter 30 crores and this quarter 10 crores so how much was contributed by pmetrix if you can give the break up yeah in the last quarter pmetrix had contributed as a total revenue of 20 crores okay and in this quarter this quarter it has not given any contribution because the supplies were one time which was done in the fourth quarter yeah they, they were all launch quantities earlier prisha uh, so uh, you know and so you are seeing the profit sharing uh, sales income will start coming from next quarter yes yeah. so partially it has started coming in uh, but it takes uh, time to you know uh, things to come in so i, I think these are early days for a product launch and uh, you know we'll have to uh, wait for it to uh, take shape and develop okay okay um and so my next question is on uh, debt so in previous con call you had mentioned that the prepayment option will be uh, will get active in august so uh, has the timeline changed or are we on track to repay uh, or sort of prepay our debt in in this month and uh, what Uh, amount will be prepaid in august and if i'm not wrong the entire amount will be long term debt correct yeah so basically uh, you know uh, we are on track to uh, prepay uh, as we had mentioned earlier we had uh, we have earmarked 300 crores out of uh, the qip raise that we had done and that is something that we would prepay during this particular month we are on track for it and this obviously okay. this, this prepayment is happening towards ncd which is a long term debt correct okay got it yeah. uh, okay and sir hello yeah yeah 
Uh, so my next question is on the third biosimilar which you have mentioned in this PPT, which is pembrolizumab. Uh, the market size that we have mentioned is uh, huge, around $28 billion. So if you can provide us with more details as to, uh, in, with respect to, let's say, the development of the biosimilar or, or the milestones that we are looking uh, at in future regarding this product or when do we plan to launch it and, and other details like that. Yeah, see on Pembrolizumab uh, as it is very important development in our pipeline. So in year, in quarters to come what you should observe is uh, how the product is moving from lab scale development to uh, validation stage and then the clinical studies. Okay. So what is important for us is as a pipeline we have taken that all molecule already in grid and we have finished initial lab scale development already. So in quarters to come, we will be moving the product from lab to clinical studies. Okay, and apart from this, we have two biosimilars in pipeline, if I'm not wrong. Ma'am, ma there are others waiting in the queue, please. Okay, sure, no problem, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mea Karodia from Abacus. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so first question was regarding the albumin. So uh, please correct my understanding if it's wrong. Uh, so uh, for excipient grade, uh, can we expect the launch uh, in the FI26? I understand that uh, therapeutic grade uh, launch can be a little later, uh, maybe in FI27 once we complete the uh, uh, clinical studies uh, on that. Yeah, see, in albumin, in XCPN grade, there is nothing like a launch because once we have drug master file, right, we will start feeding our samples or we'll start selling initial small quantities in various markets in the quarters to come, okay? So important is we will, in the quarters to come, we will see how the traction is, how the market is taking volumes. So I'll be able to give you a right picture in upcoming quarters. So currently I'm not in a position to give you a right picture. Okay, sir. And also other question was about the uh, this line item of loss from uh, JV and Associates, which has increased uh, in this quarter uh, versus year on year as well as quarter on quarter. So if you can maybe help us understand uh, more details about that. Right. So see, basically, you know, one of our uh, associate companies, uh, you know, we had a certain uh, balance. Now, in their case, there were, were certain losses that were reported in the earlier period, which, uh, you know, when we received the financials, we had to take uh, those into account, and that has been uh, corrected uh, during this particular quarter. Okay, and this last question on the tax rate, so as you explained that uh, it will be 35% overall uh, broadly in that range for uh, FY25, but uh, FY26 onwards, uh, can we expect uh, some moderation there or uh, more normalization or it shall remain in that same range only? No, 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 no let, let's take one thing at a time, right? We'll, we'll talk yeah. about it uh, in the coming periods. Okay, okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Kumar from I Thought PMS. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, Keshav. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first on albumin, uh, do we plan to out-license before phase three itself or will it happen after phase three? I just want to understand our strategy given uh, both efficacy and safety are established. Phase three is kind of redundant at least for the buyer, uh, right? See, you know, some of these are uh, strategical things which are uh, fairly confidential uh, from a corporate perspective. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are at, uh, as uh, Keshav had explained, that we are initiating our phase three studies. So this is uh, probably not the right time to have these kind of uh, discussions from our uh, corporate perspective. Okay. Or just on, uh, do we plan to start U.S. specific trials for this? Yes. Any timelines for that? Yeah, now since our phase one study is completed, so same like Europe in US also, we will be submitting this data. And uh, once we have response from the agency, accordingly, the timelines will come in picture. So I think we'll have a more picture in maybe by Q3 FI25. Okay. Uh, second on uh, liraglutide, uh, 
uh, when can we start the commercial uh, sales? Do we have any firm orders? Because one Indian company is launching this financial year, two more in FY26, but all three have existing partners, I'm told. So our launch cannot be or will not be before FY26. Is this a uh, right understanding? No, see, because uh, we were waiting for the drug master file to be ready because that is very important for anyone to use our API, okay? which has been made ready just in uh, first quarter. So you will see in quarters to come, there will be sales for this product, which will slowly start ramping up also. Okay. And uh, about the source qualification, see, because no one will wait for the launch and then start adding source. Everyone in the development, once their filing is done, they will start adding additional sources for launch so that they are more competitive in the market. So there are uh, possibilities where we will be starting to get qualified in source in the formulation source of some of the clients. Got it. And finally on uh, uh, biologics, our 8KL mammalian facility is yet to be uh, utilized. So we've added one US client, we've added two more CDMO customers. Are these for, expected to add two more in Q2 FY25, are these for mammalian facility? Can you talk about uh, the therapy or the indication for these three uh, customers? Yeah, since we are in under confidential agreement with this customer, so I will not be able to tell you uh, about these things. But what I can tell you, we have a mix of mammalian microbial projects. Okay, and uh, the South Korean CDMO, uh, the peptide molecule, uh, once, the, once we start the GMT supplies, uh, can we utilize our 2KL, the microbial facility at Darwat fully, just from this or uh, we need more such molecules? No, we can utilize it. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. That's it from my side. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question. No. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Alpesh Dalal for closing comments. Yeah. Uh, th thank you all. Uh, thanks for your interest, uh, continued interest in Chilpa Medicare. Uh, you know, we uh, uh, continue to uh, remain available to you for any further questions or queries that you may have, and uh, we'll speak to you soon again. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank On you, everybody. Yeah. On behalf of Chilpa Medicare, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and, uh, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.